Hello friends, welcome to Knowledge Galaxy to rediscover the basics with Mayank Tiwari. A premier coaching and training channel dedicated to metallurgy studies and consultancy. Established to cater the needs of students, degree, diploma and AMIIM metallurgy competitive and recruitment exams for GATE, SAIL and various other government and private sector companies, metallurgical industries, working and aspiring professionals and whosoever seeking knowledge and information about various subjects and topics of metallurgy, ferrolize, operational process optimization, productivity improvement analysis, etc. To impart practical industrial knowledge as per your specific requirements via tailor-made training sessions for your colleagues, employees and students, please contact me on knowledgegalaxy26 at the rate gmail.com or whatsapp me on plus 9199074101 for scheduling and organizing the sessions at your place or via video conferencing. My dear friends, nowadays technology has improved so much that physical distance, actual physical distance doesn't matter anymore. You can get all your doubts cleared by sitting at your home, at your comfort zone, just by contacting me, uh, contacting me over WhatsApp or phone so that for your benefit, please do contact me for any of your doubts. My dear friends, I have made so many videos which are available on my YouTube channel. So I request you to visit my channel regularly and repeatedly and watch all the videos available there so that you can gain maximum knowledge about the subject and topics and also request you to watch all my videos from start to finish so that you can gain the maximum and complete knowledge about the topic. My dear friends, as you know that training is costly but not to train is still costlier and when you are not having complete knowledge or don't get any information about the topic which you need to know so you can contact me if you don't find anyone who can help you to clear your doubts you do contact me as soon as possible and so right now in this video I am discussing about in this video, I am going to discuss about production of ferrotungsten. This is another important novel ferro alloy which is very much used in the steel making of special steel making. It imparts very specific properties to steel and it is used very widely in production of rapid steels and uh, rapid cutting tool steels. So let us now discuss in detail and know how the ferrotungsten is made, what are their properties, how it is used. Let us start the presentation. First of all, we will I would like to share with you all the physicochemical properties of tungsten because it is very much essential to know what are the elements and what properties it has so that what are the other properties it can impart to the other steel in which, in which it is added. So let us start. Tungsten, its symbol is W, is an element of sixth group of Di Mendeleev's periodic table. The overall tungsten content in the earth's crust is negligible that is approximately 0.0009% only. Tungsten was discovered by Swedish scientist K. Scheele in 1781 in calcium tungstate that is CaWO4. Calcium tungstate CaWO4 was later named Scheelite to honor its discoverer. 
In 1783, tungsten was found in a mineral called wolframite that is having chemical formula of Fe dot Mn whole WO4. For almost 100 years from its discovery, tungsten was not employed and it was only in the later half of the 19th century that experiments were made to introduce tungsten into steel to improve the steel's properties. Tungsten output began to rise very swiftly in the 20th century when it found its application in the manufacture of rapid steel. Pure tungsten is manufactured by the reduction of its oxides by hydrogen. Tungsten is a silvery white metal with the following physico-chemical properties. It has atomic weight of 183.92, specific gravity of 19.32, valency it has to from 2 to 6, melting point is 3400 degrees Celsius and its boiling point is 5927 degrees Celsius. So as you can see it is a very high melting element and so it imparts specific properties to steel. Move on. Hardness, it is having hardness of HB400. Tungsten oxidizes noticeably in the air when heated from 400 to 500 degrees Celsius and up. The melting point of tungsten alloys goes up with the rise in the tungsten content. My dear friends, this is very important aspect. You do remember always that the melting point of tungsten alloys goes up with the rise in the tungsten content. The melting point of alloy containing 70 to 80 percent tungsten is 2000 degrees Celsius and with carbon tungsten forms carbides that is tungsten carbide containing 6.12 percent carbon and tungsten dicarbide that is W2C containing 3.16 percent carbon. Carbide inclusions make tungsten brittle. The melting point of W2C is 2750 degrees Celsius. So my dear friends as you can see here that the impurity content and carbide content increases the melting point of tungsten alloys. My dear friends, just to interrupt you all, here I would like to emphasize on some special important aspect of Knowledge Galaxy. Here specialized subject wise coaching classes and topic wise doubts clearing are available. I am available for all of you to clear all your doubts and especially for Diploma Engineering, Metallurgy and Mechanical students, Indian Institute of Metals that is IIM part 1 and part 2 and competitive and recruitment exams for GATE, SALE and various other government and private sector companies, metallurgical industries, working and aspiring professionals. Here I would like to emphasize that whatever queries and doubts you are having in your mind regarding any, any subject or topic of metallurgy or any other ferrolized production, operation, maintenance. So you can contact me for getting your doubts cleared. I will try to provide you accurate knowledge and to the best possible extent at the very shortest period of time so that you can gain your knowledge, clear all your doubts, so that you can grow in your career, whether it is academic career, whether it is professional career, and so that you can develop and grow. So to continue with, here complete syllabus coverage for the students aspiring to appear in the forthcoming semester exams, that is December or June, I will be providing you all. So please contact me on knowledgegalaxy26 at the rate gmail.com or whatsapp me on 
प्लस नाइन वन डबल नाइन जीरो सेवन वन डबल फोर वन जीरो वन फॉर शेड्यूलिंग एंड ऑर्गेनाइजिंग द क्लासेस और गेटिंग इंफॉर्मेशन टू क्लियर योर डाउट वाया वीडियो कॉन्फ्रेंसिंग कॉल और व्हाट्सएप माई डियर फ्रेंड्स यू माइट हैव इनकाउंटर encountered that may you might have been having many of the doubts regarding process technology why they are doing why it is done how it is done so and if you don't find any answer to them and nobody is there to guide you properly so my dear friends i am here available to guide you all to make you know and grow and so that you don't have any doubts related to your process products technology syllabus and i will make sure that all of your doubts get clarified and you know the topic and subject very well and completely so again let's move on and continuing with ferro tungsten production tungsten gives two compounds with silicon that is W2SI3 and WSI with oxygen tungsten forms a number of oxides tungsten dioxide that is having WO2 a brownish powder with a specific gravity of 12.11 melting point of 1227 to 1327 degree celsius and boiling point of 1727 degree celsius WO3 that is tungsten trioxide this is the most stable tungsten oxide oxygen compound occurring in nature in a number of tungsten ores i do repeat here that WO3 that is tungsten trioxide is the most stable tungsten oxygen compound occurring in nature in a number of tungsten ores WO3 that is tungsten tungsten trioxide is yellow in color its specific gravity is being 7.16 and melting point is 1473 degree celsius so now let us discuss about uses of ferro tungsten tungsten is one of the most important alloying elements in the manufacture of special tool and certain grades of construction steels tungsten increases steels hardness tensile strength and elasticity my dear friends these are the properties which tungsten imparts to steel so do remember them very carefully steels with a high tungsten content that is 3.5 to 19% are used for the manufacture of high speed cutting instruments cemented carbide alloys containing 90% tungsten currently widely employed are manufactured of tungsten carbides since some tungsten concentrates have a considerable molybdenum content that is 2 to 4.5 percent ferro tungsten is smelted together with molybdenum chemical compositions of various grades of commercial ferro tungsten are mentioned in the below table my dear friends i am now providing you the specifications which are for chemical compositions for very gra various grades of commercial ferro tungsten used worldwide so this is the table which depicts the that so you can pause the video and observe each series and table this table so that you can get the knowledge so let's move on now let us discuss about the raw materials for used for the production of ferro tungsten the main raw materials used for the production of ferro tungsten that is few are tungsten ore concentrates since tungsten sa in the ores is very low they are considered to be commercial if they contain over 0.2% of tungsten trioxide that is wo3 
वोल्फेमाइट सीलाइट फर्बेराइट एंड हबनेराइट आर द मेन टंगस्टन बीरिंग मिनरल्स वोल्फेमाइट is having chemical formula fe dot mn hole wo4 is a black brownish mineral with a metallic luster its specific gravity is 7.14 to 7.5 the pure mineral assays 75% wo3 and 25% mno plus feo sea light CaWO4 is light yellow to dark red in color with specific gravity of 5.9 to 6.1 The WO3 assay in the mineral varies from 71 to 80% depending upon the impurities contained Ferberite FeWO4 is a black mineral with specific gravity of 7.5 and contains 76.5% WO3 and 23.5% FeO Hubnerite MnWO4 is a brown or dark red mineral with specific gravity of 7.2 The most common of the above mentioned minerals are the wolframite ores whose output amounts to 95% of the world's output of tungsten raw materials the biggest tungsten ore deposits are found in china australia korea and burma former soviet union also had adequate deposits too Ferro tungsten is manufactured from wolframite and sealite ore concentrates. So let us now discuss the chemical composition of tungsten ore concentrates for smelting of ferro tungsten. My dear friends, this table depicts the chemical composition of tungsten ore concentrates for smelting of ferro tungsten. you can pause the video and observe all its contents and note whatever details it is providing so let's move on my dear friends let's proceed and move on and let us discuss about ferro tungsten smelting technology the oxides of tungsten may be reduced by silicon aluminum or carbon The increase in the tungsten content enhances the viscosity of the alloy thus hampering the alloy's carburization. The most widely used method of ferro tungsten manufacturing is the simultaneous reduction of tungsten and iron oxides by carbon in electric furnaces. The chemical equation for the reaction is mentioned as one third WO3 plus C gives one third W plus CO. This is the basic chemical equation depicting the reaction of tungsten trioxide with carbon. The process begins at 690 degrees Celsius. FeO is reduced at the same time beginning at 950 degree celsius the chemical equation is depicted as FeO plus C is equal to Fe plus CO before 1937 tungsten was smelted in the soviet union as ingots in 19, 1937 a continuous smelting process developed by v n gusarov was introduced into production it consists of scooping the alloy out of the liquid bath and periodic slag tappings the following raw materials are used for the production of ferro tungsten first tungsten ore concentrates they are the tungsten bearing component of the mixture next is 
कोक यूज फॉर द रिडक्शन ऑफ टंगस्टन एंड आयरन ऑक्साइड दैट इज कोक इज द मेन रिड्यूसर द कोक यूज इज ऑफ द पिच वेराइटी विथ द मिनिमम कंटेंट ऑफ फॉस्फोरस सल्फर एंड एश इट इज यूज एज आइदर पिच फाइन्स और कोक क्रस्ड इन टू लम्प्स ऑफ लेस देन ट्वेंटी एम एम साइज इट इज पॉपुलरली नोन एज नट कोक सेवेंटी फाइव परसेंट फेरोसिल्कन इज यूज फॉर रैपिड एंड कंप्लीट रिडक्शन ऑफ टंगस्टन ऑक्साइड्स कंटेंट इन द स्लैग प्रियर टू द लेटेस्ट टैपिंग द फेरोसिल्कन यूज इज इन ग्रेन्युलेटेड फॉर्म Iron chips introduced into the mixture to reduce the alloy's viscosity. This results in a drop of tungsten content, making it possible to scoop the alloy. To avoid contamination, the iron chips should contain no non-ferrous metals and cast iron. The mixture. batch is composed of 100 kg of ore concentrate the ore concentrate is added in proportions which permit obtaining a standard metal in both the principal element and impurities the amount of reducer per batch is set so as to run the heat on the working slag with approximately 10% of tungsten oxide the rise of the tungsten oxide contained in the slag prevents the impurities from being carried over to the alloy the main impurities are carbon silicon and manganese The distribution of elements in the smelting process is given in the table below. My dear friends, this table depicts the distribution of elements. So you can pause the video and observe this table. It is very important to know which elements are present in the production of ferrotungsten and what is their distribution in metal and slag and in stake losses. so some of the hysterics marks are mentioned and described below as first star mark a single star mark depicts that 0.05% of other impurities please refer the table above mentioned next is double hysterics marks of that refers to that contained in the ore concentrate assuming that the phosphorus of the remaining mixture components constitutes stack losses triple hysterics marks remain in depicts the same as phosphorus the amount of coke per charge is 8 to 10 kg the quantity of iron necessary per 100 kg of ore concentrate is given by the formula this formula is 0.286 into a minus 0.7 b plus 0.23 c plus d whole divided by 0.90 my dear friends this is a very unique formula developed by the scientists and you might be having questions that what are these a b c and d so let me describe them in detail in next minute where a is the mean tungsten oxide content in the mixture concentrates next b is the mean fo content in the mixture concentrate C is the amount of ferrosilicon for slag adjustment per 100 kg of concentrates. D is the amount of iron introduced by spoons and iron rods. I hope I have explained what are these A, B, C, D depicted in this above mentioned equation. So it is hope it is clear to you all. So let's move on. 
द फेरोसिलकन कंजम्पशन अमाउंट टू सेवन टू टेन के जी पर हंड्रेड के जी ऑफ कॉन्सेंट्रेट द मिक्सचर मटेरियल आर कन्वेड फ्रॉम प्रपोशनिंग बिन्स टू फर्निश हॉपर्स इन सेल्फ अनलोडिंग कंटेनर्स और चार्ज इन टू ए फर्निश बाई ए मशीन फेरोटंगस्टन इज स्मेल्टेड इन ए थ्री फेस आर्क फर्निश ऑफ टू थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड के वी ए लाइन वोल्टेज ऑफ वन एंड वन वोल्ट The furnace is equipped with a rotating mechanism to ensure uniform heating of the metal over the whole furnace hearth. My dear friends, this is very important technical aspect of ferrotungsten smelting furnace. So always do keep in mind the lining diagram of a ferrotungsten furnace is shown below. My dear friends, I am providing you one of the lining arrangements of ferrotungsten furnace it may vary from furnace to furnace depending upon circumstances this is for the reference only let's move on the creation of a protective metallic layer of the crucible is a crucial startup operation to this end approximately 10 tons of ferrotungsten are charged onto the furnace banks for the first 2 to 3 days the alloy is not scooped and the concentrate is charged simultaneously with coke and the separated slag is stepped out periodically The refining of the alloy is effected at 178 volt which speeds up the charging rate and is necessary for slag enrichment. During the scooping out period the alloy should be paste like to facilitate this operation. The furnace is therefore changed over to the second voltage tap during this period. which is 149 volt electric arcs are thus shortened heat losses decreased and thorough heating of the metals is ensured the ferrotungsten smelting process consists of the following stages my dear friends these are the various technical parameters and stages in the production of ferrotungsten smelting first stage is the refining which accounts for 3 to 3.5 hours which takes 3 to 3.5 hours to refine the alloy from impurities next step is scooping it takes 1.5 to 2.5 hours next stage is slag adjustment accounts for approximately 40 minutes next stage is slag tapping it takes around 15 to 20 minutes and final last but not the least stage is fettling and electro slipping which takes 30 to 40 minutes the alloy in the furnace is enriched with the impurities during the slag adjustment period main impurities are manganese silicon and carbon a layer of low fusing fluid slag containing 5 to 7% silicon 2 to 4% manganese 52 to 54% tungsten is formed on the hearth after the fettling of the hearth and electrode slipping all available rivets and concentrate fines are charged into the furnace the full amount of iron chips as calculated for the heat is charged at the beginning to speed up refining with the result that the alloy's viscosity falls along with the decrease of the tungsten content in the alloy the concentrates are charged in portions of 300 to 500 kg 
after the melting down of the iron chips and reverts and heating of the furnace for 30 minutes the first batch of concentrates is thoroughly heated the approximate composition of the slag at that moment is given in the table below my dear friends here i am again sharing another very much important technical aspect of ferro tungsten smelting so please do observe this table very carefully and do remember the contents within so this table depicts the approximate composition of the slag following the meltdown of iron chips and reverts i hope all these informations are very much precious and you would recognize that these informations are very rare and precious and important also let's move on the process of alloy refining from silicon and manganese proceeds at the metal slag interface at the beginning the oxidation of impurities proceeds at high speeds then as the silicon and manganese content decreases and the alloy is enriched with tungsten the process slows down the speed of the process in this particular case is determined not only by the temperature of the slag and concentrations of the reactive components but by the physical properties of the alloy that is by its fluidity my dear friends these are various technical aspects which are which are to be kept in mind during ferro tungsten production smelting process i hope it is very much clear to you all so moving on a hot furnace run and shortening of downtime for fettling and electro slipping are imperative for speedy alloy refining all the crew members working in this ferro tungsten smelting process should always concentrate on bringing down the shortest possible downtime or fettling and electro slipping so that the speedy alloy refining can be achieved the process of active refining usually ends with the intensive boiling of the bath following which two or three samples are taken to determine the silicon and manganese content that is by high speed analysis if the metal is up to the specifications then it is scooped out ferro tungsten is scooped out onto the working floor by steel spoons spoons with the alloy are cooled in a bath with running water after that the ingots are knocked out of the spoons and loaded into bins control of the quality of the metal during the scooping requires the ingot fracture to be periodically inspected and its quality determined by the following symptoms first is a good sample is having the lower surface is rough with small hollows and protrusions the upper surface is wavy and the fracture is fine grained and dull samples with the high silicon and manganese content have a smooth lustrous lower surface and silvery fracture with no visible grains the carbonaceous sample has an iridescent acicular structure and a smooth lower surface an alloy poor in tungsten has a smooth upper surface and a macro crystalline fracture during the whole scooping out period silicon and manganese contents are checked repeatedly by high speed analysis the alloy is scooped from over the whole bath surface 
Normally, approximately 70 to 75 kg of alloy are scooped per each portion of concentrates charged. This depending on the WO3 content in the concentrates, the protective layer condition and the hearth level. Excessive scooping causes the furnace banks to melt down and may result in wall burnouts. An important thing in the scooping out operation is to keep the alloy heated and in paste like condition which facilitates this operation. To this end, the concentrates are charged by small batches that is 100 to 200 kg during the scooping out period. Coke is also charged by small portions to keep the normal working slag in slightly foamy condition. The slag contains approximately 11.18% WO3, 25.9% FeO, 33.9% SiO2, 15.8% MnO, 10.8% CaO, 2.48% MgO and 2.74% Al2O3. The temperature of the slag may be adjusted by varying the charging rate. The charging rate is normal when power consumption per 100 kg comes to 260 to 300 kWh. The slag is quite viscous and foamy as a result of CO bubbles. The foamy slag has considerably higher electrical resistance and promotes deep penetration of the electrodes and more efficient heating of the metal. If the charging rate is slowed down or if there is not enough reducer in the mixture, the slag overheats, its foamy decreases or stops entirely. The electrodes are high, the electric arcs are bare and local hot spots appear. Besides this, the concentrates charging rate is determined by the condition of the alloy. If the scooping of the alloy grows difficult, the charging rate should be reduced. If the metal is overheated, then the rate should be increased, that is, coke and concentrates should be fed more frequently. The charging of concentrates is stopped at the end of scooping. Coke is added to the slag by uniform batches to prepare for the adjustment of the slag. The aim of slag finishing is to drive down its tungsten content prior to tapping. Slag finishing is effected by ferrosilicon with small amounts of coke being fed at a uniform rate. The degree to which the slag is impoverized is determined by the fractures of the samples taken from the metal bath. Adequately impoverized slag has a green fracture. As soon as a satisfactory sample is obtained, the heat is held over for 10 to 15 minutes to settle the metal prills and the slag is then tapped. The composition of the final slag is approximately as follows. 0.22% WO3, 0.68% FeO, 47.38% SiO2, 24.01% MnO and 20.12% CaO. The tap hole is launched with oxygen or burned through with the aid of the electric tapper. The slag is poured into slag pots through launders fettled with 
sand. Twelve samples are taken at equal intervals during the slag tapping process to determine the WO3 content in the mean sample. The slag with WO3 above 0.3% is re-smelted and if it is less, it is dumped. The hearth is fettered following the draining of the slag. The furnace walls are looted up with semi-liquid metal from the hearth as well as with metallic waste from ingot dressing and scooping. Following the fettling, the electrodes are repositioned. The electrodes are slipped up maximum of 400 mm at one go. My dear friends, let us now discuss some of the major abnormal conditions and their troubleshooting. I hope I am providing you all very much technical information and various technical aspects of ferrotungsten smelting. So let us start. The following deviations from normal operating conditions may occur during the smelting process. First, the metal is high in silicon, manganese or carbon. An increased content of these impurities is a sign that the refining was cold run, its duration was insufficient and that the slag may have been poor at the time. To drive down silicon, manganese and carbon, refining should be continued and scooping stopped. The charging of concentrates should be continued by small batches and the slag should be sufficiently heated. If the slag is rich in tungsten oxide, no concentrates are to be charged while the bath is to be adequately heated and the melt systematically poked. Second, the metal is unmelted that is dirty. The charging of concentrates onto unheated slag, excessive charging rate, etc. may cause the appearance of unmelted metal or unmelted mixture of alloy with concentrates. To rectify this problem, the formation of a rich hard to fuse layer on the hearth prevents alloy refining and scooping. So further charging of concentrates in this case enriches the slag and leads to excessive erosion of the furnace sides. To rectify this problem, the concentrates charging should be discontinued to eliminate the side effect and the hut should be well heated. In very serious cases, iron chips are to be introduced into the furnace. Third abnormal condition is irregular scooping from the bath surface and cold run of the furnace when the alloy melts chiefly underneath the electrodes may lead to the formation of metallic salamanders which are normally called mushrooms which cause furnace troubles. To rectify this problem, in this case the electrodes become shallow positioned and arcs are bare, power input is unstable. Bottom accretions are eliminated by charging iron chips and ferrosilicon as well as by intensified scooping. This is the technique to overcome the ever mentioned problem and its troubleshooting. Pickling with iron ores or scales may be resorted to when large accretions appear. Next uh, abnormal condition is operation with rich slags may bring about the breakdown of the bath. 
as the banks are fettered with a non refined alloy the considerable amounts of impurities contained therein may react with the rich slags and as a result the protective layer heats up and melts the following steps should be taken in these circumstances depending on the degree of erosion first step is when the erosion of the sides is negligible small amounts of coke should be added to those spots where the erosion is observed next considerable erosion requires fettling with crusts and alloy taken from the hearth next is when the bath failure is imminent the power should be turned off and the banks should be fettled with alloy waste and alloy from the hearth next abnormal condition is appearance of poor silicon bearing ferro tungsten is possible at slag tapping when the hearth has been frozen high the slag hole level should be kept 100 to 150 mm above the hearth bottom to prevent the outflow of the alloy a triangular pyramid made of iron chips and coke is erected underneath the electrodes prior to applying power after a downtime the rate at which the power input is raised depends on the duration of the downtime if the electrodes are cooled down to the temperature of the ambient air the full load may be attained in 3 hours my dear friends now i am going to discuss some important steps for furnace starting after major overhaul these are the various technical aspects learned over the years by experience so i am providing you all with these informations so please do watch and remember all of them very carefully the heating up of lining after a major overhaul is first affected with firewood the flames being constantly kept long to bake the electrodes following the consumption of 20 cubic meter of firewood in the course of four shifts foundry coke is charged and heating is continued for another four shifts further heating is effected by electric currents prior to turning the power 3000 kg of ferro tungsten slag are charged into the bath and a triangular heap of iron chips and coke is made up underneath the electrodes to facilitate the power input rise the power is applied to the first voltage tap that is 178 volt baking of electrodes and heating up of the linings are effected in accordance with the following time table my dear friends this table describes in very much particular detail about how to heat a cold or overall major overhaul furnace the time table of heating is mentioned in this table so you can pause the video and observe the various durations during the last 2 hours of the third shift power input is gradually increased to full load that is 8110 amperes throughout the lining heating up period concentrates and small amount of coke are fed underneath the electrodes care is taken to prevent the electric arcs from damaging the hearth bottom beneath the electrodes in the fourth shift the furnace is operated at full load without interruptions with the concentrates and coke being charged at a low rate to melt up the metallic ingots 
in the fifth shift and further on the furnace operates at full load without interruptions in smelting of the ingots iron chips are added in the amount to produce a 75% combustion alloy following the accumulations of sufficient amount of metal approximately 15 tons scooping is begun and the furnace sides are intensively patterned to form a metallic bowl the heating up of the lining accumulation of the metallic ingots and formation of the metallic protective layer takes about 10 days scooped ferrotungsten is loaded into a dressing drum where the ingot surface is cleared of slag the drum is rotated for 40 to 45 minutes after the drum is unloaded the heat is sampled to obtain a complete chemical analysis the standard production is packed onto wooden or metallic tray so my dear friends now i am going to provide you specific raw materials and electric power consumptions per basic ton of ferro tungsten as well as the tungsten recovery in the ferro tungsten production process these are very important technical aspects so please do remember all of them very carefully first tungsten concentrates required is 60% minimum is 1529 kg ferro silicon 75% is 110 kg iron chip 70 kg pitch coke 115 kg anode paste 75 kg steel rods 55 kg electric power required is 3560 kwh and tungsten recovery is 99% i hope i have cleared and covered everything in detail about ferro tungsten smelting and my friends i am providing you all the informations free of cost which are available in my youtube channel so do help me by watching all my videos do subscribe my channel regularly visit and repeatedly visit my channel do watch all my videos contains like the content share with your friends and so that i also get motivated from each one of you as you subscribe to my channel i am very much thankful to all my subscribers who believe in me have subscribed my channel and like my content so to motivate me further please do subscribe my channel increase the subscriber count share with your friends so that others can also gain the knowledge and my dear friends all if you subscribe my channel this will motivate me to do further better so i hope you like the content and found the video worth so again request you to please don't forget to like share and subscribe the channel also remember to press the bell icon so that you can get the notification of the new videos promptly my dear friends here if you want to advertise about your product services or company or anything else for gaining popularity in my channel so you can contact me so that i can put your content for advertisement in my videos for coming videos so it will be a good platform to advertise so do contact me as soon as possible thank you very much for watching this video till the end and i am very much again thankful to all of you who helped me who believe in me and please do visit my channel regularly and repeatedly thank you very much again see you in the next video thank you